Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Foff Expression 710. In this video I'm going to show you how to do sequencing. Now this sequencing video also applies to the uh, Foff Quilt Expression 720, so both of them kind of go together similarly. Okay, so to start with, Sequencing is this little icon right there. Once you get into that, then you can choose stitches from your menu, stitches or lettering, to um, stitch something out to create it right here. Okay, so to start with, let's go into our menu, and I want to start out spelling, let's spell FOF, okay? Lettering is right there. I'm going to use that top alphabet, and here's P, it's, it's arranged similar to a typewriting uh, a keyboard. So now we've got lowercase. I'm going to press that right down there and we've got lowercase A, F, F. That's that right there. Now I'm going to go back, not with the OK, because if I did OK, it just would be ready to sew there. I'm going to go back to sequencing. Here we go. I'm going to get into the menu. And I want to put a, a little symbol on, like a decorative stitch on the beginning and one at the end. Okay. When you have something spelled out, the letters join at the bottom of the letters. That's how they join. They don't join in the middle or at the top. So you want to have a decorative stitch or decorative stitches that have a baseline similar to this one, this heart that has, the, or the stars, that would be good. Um, these stars, they join kind of in the upper third, and so if you chose one of those stars, you ha would have this jump stitch, this kind of longer, loose stitch uh, at the end between Foff and the, the lettering and your, um, your, your decorative stitch. So we want to have something that has a baseline to it. So I'm going to start out with, let's go, okay, we can get out of that. I'm going to go here. Go back to those stitches there. So we're in lettering or we're in these stitches up here. That's the difference between these two. Okay, so I want to find the little heart. So I'm going to go into group six, which is right here. And then I'm in the first category, which is bows and hearts, right there and there I am. Some of these have two pages because there's so many stitches in there and you would just use the arrow to go ahead. Now I'd like to put another one of those at the beginning. So here is the button for going right back to the beginning. Now you can just go arrow by arrow if you want to do it, but it's nice to have that um, ability to go either to the end or the beginning just with one button push. Right now, I can put one of those little hearts right there. So I go back, find the heart, put it right there. There it is. Okay, so let's say you spelled something out and you went through it like this and you decided, oh, I misspelled something. The one that's highlighted is the one that you can use the delete key right here to take that out. Well, now I have to put it back in. So I want to make sure it's right where it needs to be. And I'm going to go to lettering, find that lowercase f. And any, if you push anywhere with a, between the a and the one, that will get you to the next one. Like, for instance, I could go to the European letters or to numerals and back to uppercase. And I'm in lowercase, I want to push that F, and there it is right there. So, push OK. Now, I still want to get into sequencing because I don't want to have that stitching over and over again. Here, I'll show you this. If I go down here, see, it stitches over and over again, and I want it to stop right there at the end of that heart. So I'm going to show you in sequencing how we do that. We push I, first of all, I'm going to just put a, a not a locking stitch right there. I like to have that locking stitch. And then scissors. You don't really need to do the stop. You can do the stop and it will just stop at that point. But I like having the locking stitch in there and I like having the scissors. So that's really all I need. Now a locking stitch is there, but not at the beginning. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and put a locking stitch there too. Some of these stitches don't have a really good, like some of the lettering that holds together pretty well, but some of these decorative stitches are just so loose and open, you really want to put a locking stitch right there. So that's my okay. Now, if I go down here, you can see I can do it over and over again, but the first time through, it's going to stop right there and cut my thread. Okay. So um, now, 
let's say I wanted to save that. I would go here, right there. Now, it turns out I already have a Foff with a little flower there, but I'm going to choose this spot here, and now I have Foff with a little heart there instead. Okay, so let's get out of this. Let's get back into sequencing. I'm going to show you if you wanted to put a little more space between, say, the, the last F and that letter, you would go back, back, right here. So right there, I'm going to go into regular stitches. I'm going to find a just a regular straight stitch. Okay, but notice this is up a little bit. I really would like it down. Actually, it's in the wrong spot, so I'm going to get rid of that because I need to put it there. Yeah, all right, to go back to that. So moving your cursor around, that's what's important. Okay, so I've got that there, but I really want it to join here. So now what I'm going to do, that's the stitch that I'm modifying. I'm going to, whoops, went back the wrong way. Here we go. I'm going to move this down. See how I, this is your stitch width or needle position um, column right there. Adjustment. Put that right down there. Now I've added an extra stitch there. I could also add more stitches or a longer stitch. I wouldn't recommend lengthening that stitch because that just means there's loose thread there. So an, an additional stitch, that's going to give you more space. And then I can go back up here and put another one in there if I wanted to, and I can, I'll do that. There we go, that one. Go down this way, and there it is at the end. Now, I've already memorized it the other way without this. I just wanted to show you how you can add extra space. You can also do that if you have, say, a line of hearts, uh, and you don't want those hearts touching each other. You can give a little bit of space by adding extra just straight stitches in between there. Um, so that is your basic sequencing that you can do. And remember, that is this little button down here with a zigzag and the A next to it. You always need to push OK in order to get into the Stitch Out menu. So once you're done doing your sequencing, make sure you push OK. And you're ready to go, ready to stitch it out. Now, in stitching it out, I would recommend using Stabilizer. They recommend it right there, and that's for your quilting type cotton. So like if you're going to make a quilt label using sequencing, which you certainly can do, it's a great idea, you know, made by grandma for, and then put the date in later. Um, this is a stabilizer. It's a thin stabilizer. So I'm using two layers, but you can get uh, a little bit thicker stabilizer and you can get the kind that's tear away or wash away. Those are really nice because then it just basically leaves the thread there in your fabric and it keeps it nice and flat. You want to use a stabilizer because if you don't, this is what could happen. This is just an example of zigzag with no stabilizer behind it and zigzag with stabilizer behind it. See how that makes it nice and flat. So stabilizer is recommended. Also the 2A foot, that's this one right here. This one has where you can uh, use your IDT if you want to. This one. 2A foot, well, okay, different. The 2A foot doesn't have for that. Um, but it does have this groove at the back. When you're doing lettering or any kind of decorative stitching, you'll either use the 1A or the 2A foot because it allows that thick stitching, that all that thread you're putting into your fabric to flow right on through. So use the recommended foot for the, um, that it recommends up here and you'll have the best results. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out. I use the 1A foot, but I just won't use the IDT. Now, that worked out pretty well to put it on, but I'm going to show you if you don't get it quite on the first time by pushing it down, you can push the second time, lift up the presser foot a little bit, move the presser foot down, and there you go, it's right on there. So this is a nice little feature. And of course, this one here, push it a second time, it goes up a little higher. I kind of showed you that in a different video too. Alrighty, let's stitch this out and see how it turns out. Okay, I like to start with my presser foot down and if it's not exactly in the right place, I'll just lift it up a little bit, move it right to where I want it to be and push it down. You actually don't need to push that a second time, you can just start sewing. And notice how I held my thread for the first couple stitches. That's always a good practice to, to have. 
I'm going to guide my fabric a little bit to just make sure it stays sewing straight. You can also draw a line if it helps you, but I'm just kind of looking at the edge of the fabric here just to make sure it, it sews straight. Now, shows you up here where you are. I would recommend keeping your vision right here, your eyes right where it's sewing. Now it's doing the locking stitch. The next thing is the cutting stitch. And there it is, ready to go. Now the beauty of having it like this, you can do it over and over again, several lines, like if you had um, oh, a name label that you were putting on something and you wanted to make sure you had lots of those names so you could attach it to each garment, you could do it over and over again. So that's sewed out beautifully. Um, this little extra thread there, I just need to trim that off, but it has the locking stitch right there at the beginning, which is really helpful. Okay, so that is your basic sequencing. This also applies to the Foff Quilt Expression 720. The difference in that is that with the 720, this is a 710, but with the 720, you've got these extra wide stitches that you can do and you can put those into sequencing. See, that's wider than nine millimeters. So the, um, the feed dogs actually move side to side in order to get these wider stitches, which is, you can create some really beautiful designs that way and sequences of designs. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our Montevilla YouTube website, or uh, playlist. <laughs> uh, so, Stay tuned. Thanks for watching today. Bye-bye.